July 8th, 2024, <laughs> Dolphin News. Something else today here on NFL Live. As we go to the Dolphins. They're one of the most polarizing teams in the NFL last season. They dominated the weaker teams on their schedule, going 10-1 and one against teams that had a losing record while averaging over 35 points per game. However, including their loss to the Chiefs in the wildcard playoffs, Miami went 1-6 against teams that had a winning record, averaging roughly 16 points per game in those. Tyreek Hill has big expectations for the Dolphins offense this season. Listen to this. Very exciting, man. Like, as a lot of people know, like, we got a fast-paced offense. You know, we was number one last year. I believe we was number six the year before. So, really looking forward to, you know, taking another step. And that next step is getting the playoff game, man. Because we got the time to do it. We, obviously, we got one of the best quarterbacks in the league. So, very excited about that. The real goal is to win the Super Bowl. Man. Yes. It's cool to you know, get paid and all that, but, you know, being able to win the Super Bowl and bring something special to the, to the city of Miami, uh, something, that, something, that, something that can live with us forever, um, I believe that's, that's like, very mo monumental for all of us. Cheetah not shying away from the high expectations. And, Jeff, they're clearly high in South Florida right now with what they're expecting out of this team. Uh, we saw those numbers, though, showing the struggles against good teams last season. I, I think that's the most important thing to, to focus on here. How is Mike McDaniel trying to combat that this offseason? Well, it's really interesting, Laura, because Mike McDaniel is leaning into these narratives. He made very clear to his players already that, look, these narratives are going to follow us all the way through the season and really into December and January until we prove these narratives false. One thing I thought was very interesting about that he did uh, during this offseason, he would set meeting times for different hours and they would always be in the 24th minute of that hour. So it'd be like 11.24 a.m. or 2.24 p.m. or 4.24 p.m. And that's all signaling 24 years since the Miami Dolphins won a playoff game. And that is the message that he's trying to send to these players, that they have not won a playoff game and there are 40% of this roster returning. So Mike McDaniel doing Mike McDaniel things to motivate his players. <laughs> I, I want to be clarified. I was smiling because I would be the person who shows up at 11.25 and, and like, hey, guys, what? We're the meeting's still on time, right? And people will be so mad. Um, okay. Time is actually really relevant, I think, to the question of what was the problem at times with the Dolphins' offense. Uh, because this is an offense that when they operated on time, which is to say unbelievably quickly, they were a buzzsaw. On throws of two and a half seconds or less, Tua was by any measure one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. It was later in the down, as you see here, when he held onto the ball for more than two and a half seconds, which is basically anything outside of a quick game, numbers started to dip, which you saw against better defenses because they were able to play good coverage or come in with game plans to force him to hold onto the ball. Now, this raises the question, why is this a problem? And unfortunately, it's a complicated one. There's a number of reasons. Yes, some of it certainly is on Tua, who has to play better under pressure. But I would argue a bigger issue is one that has plagued this Dolphins team, this roster, for a few years now, and that's the offensive line. Uh, they added some skill players who will help later in the down, but if this offensive line cannot protect Tua when he has to hold on to the ball for longer than two and a half seconds, I don't see them getting over this hump. And another way to try and slow down this fast-paced Miami Dolphins offense is to actually slow them down. What I mean by that is rerouting receivers. That's one thing that I saw that other teams were able to do. They were rerouting receivers, having to hold the ball just a second longer, and then all of a sudden, you're going to see a play made. Right here, look at the top of your screen. That can be a big-time reroute, but right there, you're going to see a little bit of reroute, mess up the timing on Tyreek Hill. Tua's looking right. All of a sudden, he has to go back to the other side of the field. They're playing zone. All eyes are on Tua. And then the ball gets overthrown, intercepted. And that's not just that. Some teams play man and with a cover with two safeties that back. Some teams play cover two. Right here, this looks like a cover two defense. Once again, just reroute. My coach would always say free access equals free yards. Do not give receivers or tight ends free access. Slow them down, mess up the timing, and all of a sudden you see turnovers and interceptions, tips and overthrows start to follow. So the way you slow down a fast-paced team is by actually getting your hands on them. Tyree Kill, it's pretty interesting stuff when it comes to the contract. He still has three years remaining on the four-year $120 million extension that he signed after being traded to the Dolphins a couple years ago. However, Hill doesn't have any guaranteed money on that contract after this upcoming season. And he's scheduled to earn $19.8 million this season, which ranks 16th among wide receivers. Hill was asked about the wide receiver market and what's next for him. Take a listen. 
I'm, I'm very excited to like, you know, just be a part of, you know, um, the uh, the old wave, with, which was what, $30 million, and Justin Jefferson came and surpassed that, man. So very, you know, proud of those guys, you know, happy for, um, obviously, my teammate, Waddle, you know, get, getting his new deal. Um, so um, for, for guys like me, that's great. You know, I'm 30 years old, you know, um, also looking for a new deal. So very, very excited to see where, you know, I fit in. I feel like it was like very measured by Tyreek Hill. He did slip in there that he's also looking for a new deal. So Jeff, that means, as he mentioned, they, they've paid Waddle. They're trying to figure out what's going on with Tua. They've got to figure out a deal for Tyreek Hill at some point. How are the Dolphins managing all of this? Well, let's start with Tyreek Hill because it is interesting. They're going about this in a way that we don't often see other players like Brandon Ayuk being very clear and a little bit like uh, not as optimistic yeah. as Tyreek Hill is in his words. Drew Rosenhaus, Hill's agent, has also made very clear that he's spoken to Chris Greer about this situation. But it doesn't feel as if Tyreek Hill is planning any type of holdout. He is going into this, again, with a very optimistic tone, talking about Super Bowl aspirations. So the question becomes, will the Dolphins try to make it right for Tyreek Hill before the start of the season, or will they wait until after the season? Certainly feels like the priority here is to a tongue of Iloa. We know that that negotiation is ongoing. I can tell you there is still nothing imminent there, although negotiations are still very active. So that, to me, feels like the priority. Yeah, I agree with Jeff. It's the priority, but I also view them, their contracts, their football fates as being somewhat intertwined because when I think about Tua and whether the Dolphins should pay him, and, and I suspect they will, a lot of that to me is predicated on the offense being similar to what it's been. So much of his success is tied to the presence of those two speedy wide receivers as well as Mike McDaniel's scheme. And that's not to say he's not the perfect quarterback for that, but I can't help but feel like if you change that, uh, you would not see the level of performance. I know it sounds like an obvious point, but I think it's very, very true with him in particular. And this feels like a question, Laura, that really is hanging over so many teams this offseason. Hmm. Can you pay two wide receivers and a quarterback? We've obviously been talking about it with the Bengals quite a bit, uh, and it's something that I think the Dolphins are going to have to figure out because it is a very fine line. Yeah, and the timing is exactly the same, but it's something that the 49ers are working on as well.